Hello everyone and welcome back to another third edition Batman Battle Report. Today we have for you 350 rep of the third edition starter set Batman Crew versus a newly updated with objective cards League of Assassins Crew. We'll randomise the mission in a second but first let's go over the specifics of who is in each team. So definitely a weird mix up for the League of Assassins being led by Talia Al Ghul with the heretic as a sidekick and then his henchman Damian Wayne Goliath who may or may not be better in 3rd edition, not entirely sure. Definitely overcosted in 2nd. And then just one of the Hassassins, I think that's Hassassin number 2, either way. And as they, they now have their objective deck, so they will not be using a neutral deck, they'll be using their specific ones. Some neutral ones could be mixed in, but most of them are their own. And this is the Batman crew right out of the Back to Gotham box, 350 rep in total, being led by Batman. Gordon is a leader as well, however he has, has a special rule where if you have Bruce Wayne in your party, then he is treated as a free agent for the purposes of making the crew. Then we have Harvey Bullock and then the cops, I don't remember what they're called, that one's a detective. And then the rest are just cops 1, 2 and 3 maybe. One with a non-lethal shotgun, one with a taser and one with a flashlight. So as we get ready to see what kind of, well, I said mission earlier, I'm using second edition lingo. Uh, the scenario, no, no scenario's not the right word either. The deployment, that's the word, the deployment tape we're using. Thank you for the support on the series so far. It is greatly appreciated. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And if you want to go above and beyond to show, oh, this is a weird one, to show support, consider taking a look at the Patreon. Taking sides. Place a 10 inch and 8 inch measure sticks as shown in the map. For the rest of the game, those measure sticks are impassable elements. No model may move or trace line of sight through it. Interesting. Okay, haven't actually used the official measuring sticks that came with the box, just been using uh, normal measuring tape. Uh, okay, so there's a 4 inch deployment but both teams are actually next to each other, but they have to come round the circle to get at one another. And presumably you can't grapple over it either. Weird. Okay, interesting. I, I will go for this and get it set up. So here we are set up with this very, very strange deployment with the impassable force field, I don't know, the line down the middle so they can't pass through it, they can't grapple over it or fly over it. Batman's crew is deployed here up to the line with the exception of Harvey Bullock who has hidden so he can be deployed anywhere in the map and has opted to do so. And you can see who has audacity as well, Gordon, Batman, and he actually does have a name, he's, he's Officer Merkel. The other ones are Detective and GCPD Cop 1 and 2, but for whatever reason he gets a name. And then the League of Assassins are here and Bullock is all the way up there behind there and he also has uh, audacity as well so in terms of cards that are getting played before the game before round one starts uh, Die Hard which we've seen a few times now has been played by the League of Assassins choose one of your models that isn't the boss as long as it's not killed in the next turn you score being put on the heretic because he ain't going down so that is in play and I think that's everything so we're ready to get started with battle round one so speaking of Officer Merkel, he actually got things started with the Batman crew going first this round. With Audacity, he did a move action, then as his tactical action he placed a suspect marker, didn't trigger any cards, but has placed it, and that is everything's over to the League of Assassins now. So the first activation for the League of Assassins was Goliath, and it's worth noting, Goliath's rules were updated in the Compendium 1.1 update. The new card that's come with the Assassin Objective Cards releases are also updated, it looks like. So he had Audacity. He used his special to activate Fly, so he gets 8 inches on top of his 6 plus 2 for being an animal. Then he efforted, so he stunned himself for 1 damage, to use Carry to pick up Damien. And normally if he carries someone, they get impaired movement, but the new rule is if it's Damien, he does not get impaired movement, so he is free to act. Also, could not see anything that said animals can't place uh, suspect markers. The animal rule does not say they can't, so... Can't see any rule that says he wouldn't be able to do that. So he has also did his tactical action to place a suspect marker. And that stun will be gone at the end of the turn as long as he doesn't take any more damage. So sensing impending danger from a upstart youth and his pet bat dragon, Bullock activated. He placed a suspect marker behind here where he was and then he ran away down this end of the table to get away from Damien who still gets a full activation. Two quick movement activations just to cover now. The Hassassin activated without Audacity but a free manipulate because he was within 8 of his boss. So he did his 10 inch move and then he placed a suspect marker. That's the upside of only having a 4 inch deployment I guess. You only have to be up to 6 inches away to start placing the markers. So he did that. Gordon activated with Audacity. 
he moved up where you can see him, and he also placed a suspect marker. Simple as that. So it's rolled back around now to the assassins, unless they use a pass. Damien activated uh, with Audacity and has moved where you can see him, chasing after Bullock, and he has placed a suspect marker on the floor there next to the Batmobile, doing his evil things that Batman he is presumably here to help stop. Two activations for Batman next because a pass was used by the League of Assassins. So this cop with the high-res uh, vest, high-vis, high-vis, not high-res, he moved up, he didn't have audacity, he could have manipulated, but that's all he did. And then the lady with the taser also just moved up, following behind Officer Merkel there. So now either is Talia, Damien, or other Damien to go. Wait, no, sorry, actual Damien is gone, the clone hasn't. Talia Al Ghul activated with Audacity, she has moved up and placed another suspect marker right there. And then the the detective, rather, with the pistol, he activated and he just moved up with his friends. So two quick activations where nothing happened there. It's going to be a very fast paced, not much happening first round. It's just down to the heretic now to end off the turn for the League of Assassins, and then Batman for the Batman crew. So for the final two activations about round one, we can actually stay over this end of the table. The Heretic took his sewer grating with Audacity for the Manipulate to get over next to Bullock, and I'm sure Harvey Bullock is worried right now. Then Batman used his back claw for the extra movement, moved up to where you can see him. He threw Batarangs at Damien. Damien is small, so he gets plus one to his defense stat against the range stack. So he would be getting hit on fives other than the strength die. Batman rolled poorly and did no damage. So I believe cards are being played. So we'll come back and clean up and see what those are. So at the end of battle round one, Goliath has healed his one stun, and because the heretic did not go down, Die Hard has been scored for the League of Assassins. There we are, it's in focus. But also, do not deviate from the plan has been achieved. The opponent does not reveal any of your suspect markers this round, as long as you place at least one, and four got placed. So that scores, and that's a score at the end of the game, at the end of the round phase, that's why that number four is there in the round one and you're only limited by how many you can score per activation in the round but after the round you can apparently play as many as you want so there is a second do not deviate from the plan and it seems like that can be played because it's not during an activation it's it's a uh, phase four so if that's the case the league of assassins has just got a six point lead because batman's crew has scored nothing and with that we go into battle round two So the setup for Battle Round 2 has happened. The League of Assassins will be going first in Battle Round 2. And you can see where Audacity has been given to the cops over there, Gordon and Batman. Of course, the Heretic has it. Damien has it. And then over here, Talia and Goliath have it. But also, in the initiative phase, a card is being played called From the Shadows. Target an enemy model and mark it as the objective. If the objective model is the first model you remove as a casualty this round, score this card. Two guesses, well one guess, who the target is. It's Bullock, because the Heretic is probably about to smash his face in as we get started. So the Heretic was the first activation as expected. He used a special action as an activation for Devastation, I think. Oh, Unstoppable. Unstoppable is what it was. Which means you need two successful defense blocks for each one hit of his that gets through, because he's hitting with such ferocity. He actually whiffed his attack roll pretty badly, including the Strength Die, which was a one, because he only needs a two. And he did four blood. To Harvey, which is obviously painful, but not enough to kill him because he's got six endurance. So he is alive, but barely. And that was just down to the bad roll because efforting wouldn't have really made a difference there. So as awkward as it is, we're sticking over this end of the table. Batman activated, he ran into the heretic. He could be seen, so sneak attack didn't proc. Uh, there was a bit of debate about whether or not it's worth using an effort, which costs you one stun to avoid two if someone's hitting you with stun damage. It seems much more useful if you're being hit by blood damage, so Harvey probably should have. Either way though, the Heretic did not use any effort, but that doesn't matter because Batman did an amazing, was that six, seven, eight, eight stun to him. He has seven willpower, so he is unconscious, which has also triggered Dirty Job, a neutral card in the Batman deck, make an enemy model KO or a casualty. It's only worth one point, but at least that's on the board now. And the Heretic is down. Also, because he's not a henchman, I don't think he gets the benefits of Talia's mind control substance, which makes henchmen wake up automatically. Uh, well, we'll see if it comes to that at the end of the turn. Yeah, let's have all the action happen on the end of the table that's hard to film. Damien activated and he moved up and then he attacked Harvey, which was very smart. Harvey did exert an effort to, which stunned him for one, to make an attack dice get removed. Doesn't matter though. Four blood. Poor old Harvey. He's eating donuts and drinking coffee in heaven now. Or the other place. 
So he is dead, which in turn has indeed triggered from the shadows scoring for two because he was the first person to go down. And had Harvey been able to activate, he was going to arrest the heretic. And it would have been beautiful because he has a rest. Yeah, he does have a rest. It's not going to happen now though. Back over to Batman. So the next activation was the high viz cop over here. He was in contact with the sewer gratings and he only had one action because he didn't have audacity. He used the manipulate action to traverse the sewer and has now popped up behind Batman, hopefully willing to do the arrest next turn because he can't do it this turn. Goliath activated next with audacity and he activated flies his special action again, which allowed him to have enough movement to make it all the way up there, looking down at the potential meals he might get next time. Two quick activations that basically mimic each other because neither had audacity. The lady with the taser has just moved up her 10 inches and as if copying her, the Hassassin without audacity moved up exactly 10 inches as well. From where he was, he was slightly further forward. But still, they're going to end up having a meeting where they discuss violence. Officer Merkel activated with audacity, moved up and has placed another suspect marker. And that means it's just over to Talia now to end off the turn for the League of Assassins. And then there's still Gordon and the JCPD detective to go with both who have audacity for Batman. So Tali I'll go moved over the limo with impaired movement which dropped her by 6 inches to where you can see her there and then as a resource, not as an objective card because as an objective card this is her unique card, it would have to be played at the end of the round but as a resource it just costs 2 resource points of the 3 you get per turn. All friendly suspect markers within 20 inches of a model, model named Talia Al Ghul are immediately converted into imminent threats. They're still counted as suspect markers, although it says suspects because of a a weird translation thing on all the assassin cards where they only ever say suspects instead of suspect markers with only one one exception I can think of. Either way, if an opponent wants to reveal them, they first have to remove one of their own suspect markers or they cannot do a reveal to get rid of a suspect marker. So even though this was being saved for arresting the heretic, get them off the streets has been played as a resource also costing to cancel any objective card used as a resource, this card is discarded. So. Although it is odd that it specifies this card is discarded. Does that mean cancelling that doesn't discard it? Weird. I think it is discarded because its, it's effect has been cancelled. So that's both those cards gone. So now it's over to Gordon and the detective. So the final two activations of Batman 2 taking us to the halfway point. The detective has simply moved up and placed a suspect marker that is just outside of 4. So it's allowed to be placed there. Then Gordon moved next to the sewer and has traversed the sewer over to the other side of the table to perhaps cause trouble. And that does take us to the end and the cleanup phase of Batman 2, so we'll have to do uh, a, a wake up check on the heretic and see if any objective cards are being played. So there is in fact no objective cards being played at the end of Batman 2, however there is a correction due to a rule change in 3rd edition and that is desensitized. So it just used to mean you didn't lose dice through accumulated stun, Obviously that doesn't matter anymore because you don't allocate dice and the heretic has desensitized and the way it works now is once you reach your cap of willpower, in his case 7, he does not fall unconscious, he just starts taking blood damage instead, even if the person attacking him is not doing blood damage. So he is awake but he has full willpower, still he's got his 7 willpower gone to the stun damage Batman gave him but he also has 1 blood off of his nine endurance but he is a, he is conscious he will get a turn unless Batman takes him down so that's corrected it does make a difference it's happened too long ago to correct now because he came over there to arrest him <laughs> obviously he can't be arrested because he is not unconscious and will never be unconscious he is just killable <laughs> so that's uh, unfortunate didn't realize desensitize has changed that much apologies for getting that wrong but with that let's move into battle round three so as we start Battle Round 3, it will be the Batman crew going first. However, in the initiative phase, yet another From the Shadows is being played. So that's the two victory points on the line. If the target can be the first model taken out this turn, and the first model selected this turn is the poor high-vis policeman over there who's just trying to give parking tickets. He is the target for the League of Assassins this turn. So to get Battle Round 3 started, the penultimate battle round, I guess, if you attack someone with desensitize, you can just force Batman to be a murderer because that's what happened. He activated, he didn't even need audacity, so it was wasted because all he did was an, uh, a tactical action. He attacked the heretic. He did phenomenally well and got 12 stun, but because he's got full stun, it gets converted to 12 blood and has killed him. So Batman's forced to be a murderer because of desensitize. Either way, it also procked another dirty job 
make an enemy model KO or casualty for one victory point. That's a weird rule interaction. Just saying. Damien activated to try and go in for the kill and one effort was used to make him lose an attack die and he rolled poorly. So the high viz cop has actually survived the assassination attempt. Amazing. And I don't think anyone else is going to get to him either. Officer Merkel activated from where he was, which is next to that suspect marker there. He shot because he had clear line of sight to the Hassassin with his non-lethal medium range shotgun. And he was within 12, so it didn't matter that it was 16 inches max. Did 6 stun, he only has 4 willpower, so he is unconscious. He will wake up automatically at the end of the turn, thanks to being a henchman and Natalia having mind control substance. No cards triggered, but he will not be getting an activation this turn, at the very least. Forgot to mention that Merkel then used a movement action because he had audacity so he could fire and do something else to move into contact with that suspect marker, but he can't reveal it because he used the tactical action already. Goliath activated with audacity. He was up here. He activated fly with his special action, which gave him enough to fly down here after the poor policeman. However, he whiffed on his attacks. His strength die is two plus, but obviously his normal attacks have to go through the defense of the cop, which is three, but he still managed to do badly including some defense rolls, all of a sudden one claw attack got through for one blood, one stun, so he is still very much conscious. He's on half willpower and has four HP left. So the next activation was the JCPD detective and he moved up with Audacity. He then used his special action to use a rest on the Hassassin and has removed him. Now that's looking bad for the League of Assassins, but keep in mind, no cards triggered. So even though there's only Talia, Damien and Goliath left, they are way ahead on victory points. So then, he can use a tactical action, so he shot his pistol at Talia, lost two dice because he moved and fired, but one hit got through to her and did one blood, one stun. So speaking of Talia, it's now over to her to end this turn for the League of Assassins. So Talia charged 10 inches into Jim Gordon and attacked him with her, her sharp overwhelming swords. Sharp is just a uh, plus one to strength die and overwhelming is minus one to target's defense, which put him at defense two. Thankfully she didn't roll too well, Four blood is still bad. Oh, I forgot to mention, he did exert himself for one effort to make her lose an attack die. But he took four blood and technically one stun. He is on two blood damage remaining. And now it's over to him and one cop? Yeah, the taser cop to end off the penultimate turn. So we've got a really important turn to cover for Gordon, but very quickly, because no audacity, the, ta the taser, rather, police woman just moved up behind Goliath. You'll notice though that Batman is not there but that's part of Jim Gordon's turn. So over here, Jim Gordon had audacity, started in base to base with Talia. His pistol is light so he can fire it in close combat. So as his tactical action, he did just that. He did pretty well, three blood, three stun. She's still standing though. Then as his special action, he used his once per game bat signal, which is as long as Batman is not killed or knocked down, he immediately appears in base to base contact with Gordon and he was standing here at the time. So hello, Batman is all of a sudden over here to help Gordon. Then he used his movement action to move into base to base with that suspect marker there. And that takes us to the cleanup for the penultimate round. So during cleanup for battle round three, no objective cards are being played. Everybody who has stun damage has healed one stun. So Talia, Gordon, and the uh, the cop with the high viz vest on. It also means that From the Shadows did not get procced because he didn't go down. So that's just discarded. And that's it. So into the final turn with well, things aren't looking good on the table for the League of Assassins, but they're definitely way ahead on victory points, so something's going to have to happen here. So in the initiative phase of the final battle round, everyone in the League of Assassins, because there's only three models left, have Audacity. Gordon, Batman, uh, and Merkel, and this cop here have been given Audacity for Batman. And also Die Hard has been played for the Batman crew. He is the target, so he has to live this turn, and then that will score two victory points. No cards being played for the League of Assassins, but they are getting first activation, so let's see what happens. So Talia, being the spiteful so-and-so she is, which is very in keeping with her personality in the comics at least, she activated, she chased down Gordon. He used an effort to make her lose an attack die, but it doesn't matter. Four blood got through, he had two or three left, so Talia has successfully assassinated Jim Gordon. No objective cards played, just did it out of spite. Batman saw red a little bit there. He moved in, he attacked Talia and did a stupendous eight stun damage to her, knocking her out completely and because it's the last battle round, she is no longer an issue. And it also has triggered Batman's unique card back to Arkham, make an opponent's boss KO or remove it as a casualty. So that is three victory points scored for Batman's crew. So we're back over this end of the table for Damien's activation and he did not go for the kill. He instead backclawed to safety behind there 
and placed a suspect marker. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's too close to an allied suspect marker. However, under their noses has been played, place a suspect marker within four inches of an enemy suspect marker. So presumably that trumps the rule in the rulebook that says you're not allowed to do that, and it has scored two points. As per usual, the final turn is just a scramble for victory points, and this could make the difference. The JCPD detective was the next activate with Audacity. He did a move action. His tactical action was to reveal the suspect marker and remove it, which in turn has triggered following the clues, which is hopefully visible. Reveal an enemy suspect marker at least 10 inches away. It's approximately 11 and a bit away from the board edges with a model with the detective trait. He, Gordon and Bullock all have the detective trait, obviously because the detective is in his name. So that card has been scored. So now it's just Goliath to end off the final battle round for League of Assassins. So Goliath activated, flew over here and has placed another in view, suspect marker, within four inches because another under their noses has been played for another two victory points. So now it's just down to the JCPD cops, literally, it's these three JCPD cops to see if they can eke out any last minute victory points to take us to the end of the game. So of the cops, only one of them had audacity left over, so only his turn mattered. Uh, it didn't even matter they had audacity, honestly, because he ended his last turn in contact with a suspect marker. He removed it, reveal an enemy suspect marker, blah blah blah, when you do draw an extra card, doesn't matter because we're at the end of the game. But what is important is comb through the evidence for two victory points, has been scored for Batman, and because we're now at the end of the game, that does also mean that Die Hard has scored because the JCPD detective lived to the end of the game. So with that, we'll be back to see the final scores. I think the assassins have still taken it, believe it or not. So the moment of truth, it all comes down to this. Worth pointing out that had suspect markers not changed in that last turn, there was an end of game, have more suspect markers in your enemy card that the League of Assassins could have taken. I don't think it matters because they scored a lot of high scoring ones, but still. Batman crew first, so that is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, 11. League of Assassins, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, um, wow, they won by one point. The League of Assassins win 12 to 11. And that's assuming that both of those were allowed to be played. Because if they weren't, then... Well, actually, no, it would have scored the next round anyway. Because there was at least two turns in a row when the cops didn't reveal any suspect markers. That didn't happen until the final turn, so... I don't think it would have mattered either way, but I am curious that both of those could have been played at the same time. I don't think it would have changed the outcome. League of Assassins win, despite their leader being unconscious, and Goliath and Damien rethinking joining the League of Assassins and perhaps siding with Batman after the battle. We're going to change up the table now, make it a bit more um, franchise neutral, if you know what I mean. But there will be more Batman 3rd Edition coming soon. Maybe there's no other decks being announced yet, so if any other crews do appear, they'll have to use the neutral one, which is less fun, but... Hey, that was an interesting deployment type. Very interesting. Hope you enjoyed. Please do show your support and subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Until next time, ta-ta for now.